Well, I think our guys got off to a good start tonight. Uh, we beat a team that we knew would be very difficult to play against, a team that presses for 40 minutes, uh, an unusual style. And I thought it was great for our guys. You know, with 10 new players, there are a lot that we had to learn about our players in that type of situation. And I thought for the first 25 minutes, we played about as good as we could play. And then the last 15 minutes, you know, true to form for who they are, FIU, they're going to keep going. They're going to keep playing for 40 minutes, and they did. And they turned us over quite a bit. You know, we ended up with 18 turnovers. So those are things we have to work on to improve. But the only way you can, you know, learn that is to be in those situations. And I think we'll benefit from that as we go through the season. So how do you think they handled the press overall? You talked about areas to improve. Uh, how, did you, how would you assess for a first game? I thought for the first game we handled the press fairly well, uh, especially the first 25 minutes. I think in the first half we may have had like 10 or 12 assists and I think five five turnovers. I think in the second half is when we accumulate a lot more turnovers. And that was us just, you know, one, I'll give them credit for how hard they play and, and it, seems, it seems like it's six, seven guys on the floor when it's really only five. And the other is just our execution. You know, we have to be better at setting up and running the things that we, that we want to run. And I didn't think we did that on a lot of their made baskets. And so we have to be better at getting organized. And that's why our guards got to take the lead in that situation. And so we'll, we'll look at that over these next few days and look to make improvements. Coach, great win. Many new guys playing on the court together for the first time in a real game. Do you think some of that was a translation of the result of so many turnovers, or was it just a miscommunication? Well, I always give the other team credit for how hard they played, and they made a lot of plays. They had active hands. They were quick. They were in passing lanes, and they made some good plays for us. And on the other side of that, absolutely, you're absolutely correct. You know, you have a lot of guys for the first time playing in front of a crowd. You know, we've played close to our scrimmages, but it's just us in there with, against the other team. So I think all those things, you know, play a factor in what's going on out there. I thought our guys, for the most part, played well. You know, guys that I really complimented. Of course, Jalen Sellers, I thought, was terrific out there, you know, throughout the night, made a lot of plays for us, as well as I thought Shamari. His numbers may not show it, but I thought he was a catalyst for us. He, you know, rebounding, passing the basketball. He defended the other guards, you know, the other guard that was really good, Dean. I thought he did a great job guarding him. He was one of the leading scorers from last year. Uh, so he did a lot of things that may not show up in the box score that, you know, coaches love to see. And so I'm happy for how he played for us. When you these new guys, did you like the, the chemistry and the communication that you saw on the court throughout the evening? You know, I thought, it's, I thought it was pretty good, except for the last 15 minutes. I thought we kind of broke down. I thought the first 25 minutes, I thought the communication was good. Our guys, our guards were getting us into things we wanted to get into. And we were running it fairly well. I thought the last 15 minutes, we got a little out of character. We stopped running the press break that we had designed to run for, against this team and actually went to another press break, you know, but we didn't, that didn't come from us. You know, I think they kind of just thought they could just run it. And no, we, you have to get set up a certain way to be able to attack their press and attack their pressure. And uh, when we got away from that, I think it got, us, it got us out of sync a little bit. So these are things we're going to clean up. Like they, they meant well. By, by you know changing up the press break, but they have to understand that you know that's that's a call we're going to make on the sideline, and then their job is to follow that and execute. And so that's what we have to work on that communication. John, you talked disappointing, obviously, with C.J. Walker. The news of C.J. Walker missing some time. What what can you say about that? And and what you know when do you think you might be able to get a chance to get him back on court? Well, we're going to miss C.J. C.J. was you know doing a terrific job for us this summer and this fall. And I just, I feel, you know, my heart goes out to CJ, you know, first and foremost, because I've known what he's gone through over the last three years. I mean, that's tough. I mean, I've been in a position where I've been injured, you know, multiple years out for, you know, extended period of time during different seasons. That's tough mentally for any, any person who loves this game. And so first, my heart goes out to him. Uh, you know, I'm excited and I'm encouraged that he's, that he's just something that's not going to, you know, be a season ending injury. That, that's, that's a positive. You know, he has to continue to, you know, rehab and get himself back, you know, together. But I don't know a timetable, so I don't want to, you know, put something false out. But, you know, I don't think it's a seizing in the injury. So it's a matter of him just continuing to improve, you know, daily. And we hope to see him to get back on the court as soon as he's healthy enough to contribute. Contact injury or what happened to him? Uh, it was, it was, it, it was in a, like a closed door scrimmage. So it was in our last closed door scrimmage. You know, he went out with about a minute and 50, minute 45 to go in the game. You know, very little contact, and it just maybe a misstep or something, and then, you know, came up hobbled. And when he was hobbling, we said, hey, you know what, let's not chance it. 
you know, let's take him out the game. You know, it's a minute and 45 or so to go. Just take him out, and then, you know, he should be okay. And everything we thought he would be. And then, that, you know, as he got seen, which was recent, you know, MRI and then being seen yesterday, you know, that's when we knew that, hey, you know, something may need to be done. And so I think, you know, our, our medical team did a great job. You know, they do always do a good job with our guys. And so now it's just a function of him just following their instructions. You know, once he's able to start rehabbing, rehab it hard and, and then make his return, which uh, we're, we'll be excited to get him back when, uh, whenever that happens. So surgery? Yes. Is it something in his knee? Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk a little bit more about uh, Jalen's stellar performance tonight. Uh, 23 points. I think he was one off from tying his uh, career high record. Uh, just how would you describe his performance tonight? You know, I thought he did a really good job. Not even the scoring. I mean, I, you know, we know he can put the ball in the basket, and I think he showed some of that tonight. But the thing I thought that he did really well was, you know, he played a complete game. I thought he defended on the ball well when he was in position to defend. And I thought he did a good job of getting to the, to the you know, boards for us as well. You know, I've been challenging him on getting to the boards more. And, uh, you know, I like to see him doing that. And I think he's active. He has good instincts for where the ball is going to go, and I thought he made some good plays for us there. So the complement of scoring was also I thought his defense was really good as well as his rebounding. 11 players see action tonight. It was just that by design just to see how guys play when the lights come on and kind of figure out the, that rotation? Absolutely. You know, some of the things you're going to learn is going to learn, like you just said, you know, when the lights come on. And I thought our guys all throughout the summer and the fall were really doing a good job, and they still are. Just to see different guys are stepping up in this situation, uh, like a Tyler Hendricks, for instance. It was really good to see him, you know, the way he played, you know, tonight. I thought he had a good floor game as well, you know, rebounding, defending. You know, he, he handled the ball. He was solid with the ball. So these are things that we're looking at with our younger guys. And we played with about three or four freshmen. So uh, it, they got, you know, quality minutes against a good team, a team that presses, which is a hard team to play against. So I think that uh, they'll benefit from that as they, you know, as their careers, you know, go forward. Another guy you're going to be without for a while is Antoine. Uh, what was your reaction to learning about him and the eligibility issue? Uh, you know, disappointed. But, you know, I understand. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's a tough process to go through. You know, I'm disappointed for him. I mean, he sat out last year for the most part, and he's sitting out again, you know, part of this year. That's hard on a young person. I mean, something that you love to do, you've been playing all your life, and now you're being, you know, put in a position where you're sitting out multiple years and extended periods of time. That's, that's hard. So for, for me, you know, it's, we want to keep him encouraged, keep him working, keep him trying to get better. And then, you know, when, you know, December comes around, because he's the second semester, he'll be eligible to play second semester. So when that comes around, you know, he'll be able to start, you know, playing with us. So he's not out for the entire year, which is a good thing. Marcellus Avery, is he in a similar situation? or? or well, his situation is a little bit different. Welcome to the new world, yeah. right? His situation is a little different. He... He is in a position where, uh, you know, we, we filed a waiver for him. Uh, the waiver was denied, so we're appealing that, of course. So now they're going through that process, and then we'll see where we are. Another young man that was out, you know, their season got cut short last year. No fault to his. He wasn't involved in any of the things that, that occurred. So he sits out, and then now he's, he'll be a first-time transfer, and so he's sitting out potentially again. You know, so it's it's tough, and that's tough for him. He set out pretty much all the last season from January on, and then you can potentially sit out all again this year, and you can be a first-time transfer. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, like I said, we're appealing it, and hopefully you know, we'll get some favorable news. But, again, I feel sorry for these young people who invest all the time that they invest in the sport and, you know, to really do no fault of their own. and. They're in a position where they, they can't get out there and do something they love to do. And these are some guys that you were planning on being a big part of your team. What's the impact on your, your roster now? Well, it definitely impacts us because they're, they're two of our more experienced players. You know, Antoine will be in his last year, and, 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 and Marcellus is, is a junior. And so, hence, we're playing a lot of freshmen. And that, that's fine. I think these guys are doing a good job, and they're developing. They learn our system. But they don't have the experience that those other players have. They don't have the physicality, the size you know, as well, things that, you know, we were counting on having. Uh, we're missing some right now, but, you know, we'll, it's not over. You know, we're still, you know, running that race, you know, with both of those young men. We do know Antoine, barring anything health-wise, will be able to join us, you know, in the near future, as well as, uh, you know, hopefully we can get some good news on, on Marcellus Avery. But that's, you know, 
we'll if, see. If Marcellus is a first time transfer, what's you would what's the issue? Did he not enter the portal at the right time? Or? Well, he, he entered the portal, but he didn't enter it. You know, he, well, he didn't enter the portal the right way. He because. He wasn't allowed to be on campus. He wasn't allowed to have any communication with the staff because of all the things that happened. If you have followed, just read if up something on came out today. State. That was pretty bad. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So he couldn't anything. And so with that, he was put in position where, so being told that, and he didn't have council people around him saying, "Hey, this is how you go enter the portal." So what he did was he just he tweeted it out thanking New Mexico State for everything that they had done, and it was great. I mean, I had actually seen it. He is dated. It's, it's, it's tweeted, so you can always look it up to see if it's, if it's you know, authentic, right. which it is. Thanking everybody. He knew he wasn't coming back because everybody had been kicked off the team, and he said, don't communicate with the coaches or anyone else. So what do you do? So now you don't do that, and now because of that, you didn't enter in time, and so you're stuck for another year, and you just set out a lot of last year, and you're going to set out this year, and you're a first-time transfer. And you couldn't go back there and play because they weren't welcome back to go there. So what are you, what are you supposed to do? Just, you know you have to go somewhere. You're not going to just end their career, right? So I'm just hopeful that they'll see that side of it and understand that this, to me, is pretty straightforward. It has nothing to do with anything other than he was told a certain thing. He, he honored it. And I, I would think if you would ask those people, that administration, I'm sure they would – you know, confirm that without any, you know, problem. So I don't see why, you know, his situation has been so difficult to solve. What's the appeal then? What is the nature of the appeal then in that case? Just, just continuing more information, uh, more information that they may be seeking from, you know, different people in the administration, things that they may be seeking uh, and want to hear from. I just hope when they hear from it, they, they take it serious because you can get all the information and, and the people can say the things that, that are actually correct, but that doesn't mean they have to take it serious. So we'll see. Hopeful? I'm actually, I'm definitely hopeful because I think the young man should be playing. I don't see no real reason why he should not be able to play. I'm just disappointed he couldn't even play in our first game because his situation, he sat out most of last year through no fault of his own. To me, quite frank, everybody on that team should be eligible, to be frank. I mean, that's just my take on it based on what happened because what happened was they got – you know, ended their season for things that he had nothing. You look at him, look him up. He has nothing to do with any of that. So why are we going to hurt this young man because he didn't get something on a date? But he was told not to talk to any coaches or anybody on his campus. I don't really understand that one personally. Uh, last week you said you were hoping that a lot of fans were going to come out to see this game. How would you describe the uh, crowd tonight? I thought we had a good crowd. You know, I'm always looking at the student section because, to me, you know, on the college campus, that's what makes it makes it go. Their energy, their enthusiasm, and I thought the student section had a, we had a really good crowd over there, you know, for our first game. So I think we'll build on that. I think our, our, I think our student athletes didn't disappoint. I think they came out and gave a great effort. You know, they saw them there and they they honored them by by hard they played, and that's what you want to see. Speaking about the student section. Jalen Sellers had a big time highlight play. They got the crowd out of their seats. Are you going to advise him to keep going for those? Or are you going to <laughs> well, no, I want, I want Jalen to be Jalen. Jalen plays with a lot of spirit. You know, he's one of those players that plays with a lot of passion. As you can see on both sides of the basketball, he gives you great energy and effort every time he's on the floor. So that's one of them continue to see him be himself. I don't, you know, I don't, you know, everybody's a different personality, you know. You know, so his personality is he's fiery. He wants to get after it. Hey, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a roll with that because I think it helps our team. Guys feed off of it. I thought the crowd fed off of it, and uh, so that's a good thing for us. You talked about young guys standing out. You had Niels. Uh, he flashed some potential as a ball handler. Had two turnovers though. What'd you like out of his game? You know, I thought it's a great game for him. Niels, you know, a great game. He was coming from overseas. Uh, you know, he's played the point over there. But you know, every every. Every country has a different style of play, and I think he faced a style today that, that was probably a style he hadn't really seen before, and that's being pressed for the whole game. And so that means every single possession you have to be you know, ready and alert to make the right play. And so I thought he got caught a couple of times where he was a little bit of a freshman. You know, he didn't see what was coming you know, defensively, how they set him up. But he'll learn from that. That's the only way you can grow is to get thrown into that fire and figure it out. And he, he's a good enough player where he's going to figure that out. He's going to be a better basketball player for it. Speaking about sides, you got three guys on the team, Daniel Silo, Ibrahim Diallo, and Omar Payne, who make a great impact. Do you want to speak on them some more? Uh, no question. I think uh, 
you know, Omar did a really good job for us. He, you know, he held down the center position for us. They're long and they're athletic. I think uh, with Seth down there, Seth is probably seven one the center for them, and he's mobile. And I thought Omar did a really good job of, of playing him. Uh, he got in a little foul trouble, which hurt us a little bit. And then uh, what was the other gentleman? Uh, um, oh, you talking about you talking about Ibrahima? Yes. Ibrahima did a great job. You know, Ibrahima, you know. What you don't know is Ibrahima, this is his first week of practicing with us in the last three weeks. So for him, you know, he's really, you know, is rusty. So I think his best basketball for us is still ahead of him because as he starts to get more minutes, extended minutes, I think he's only going to get better and better for us because, like I said, he was out most of the, most of the preseason practices for us. And so it's good to see him get out there and get some minutes because we weren't sure if he would even get that many minutes. And so to, to get, you know, 10 minutes tonight, I think continues his momentum. We'll be off tomorrow. He can continue to recover and be ready to uh, go, you know, on Wednesday. You've got a big early test on Friday at Miami. What does your team need to do to be successful in that one? And do you have any, you know, early thoughts on playing Miami? Have you, I'm sure you haven't gotten to a full scout yet, but what do you know about Miami as well? Uh, you know, I haven't seen Miami play this year at all. Uh, so last time, you know, I've seen Miami's when we were scouting them last year. I know they're a talented basketball team. Uh, they always are. I know, I know they play hard, you know, I know they play fast. Uh, those are things I can recall from last year. And so I'm excited to start looking at them, to be quite frank, tonight, you know, as we start to prepare. But, you know, they're going to be well coached and, and they're going to be talented. Mentos came in the game and sh for a period of time and shot some threes. They didn't drop. If they had dropped, would they have stayed in the game or was it just the shot selection that you weren't liking? Oh, no, I'm fine. I thought Mentos did a good job for a freshman for us. I thought he came out there. He wasn't shy. He took the shots that he had. And we're confident that he can continue to help us as we move forward through the season. It's just like you said, you look at the amount of guys we were able to play tonight, you know, just you only have 200 minutes for a team. And so it's spreading those around to guys and uh, especially some of our, our more experienced players as we move forward. I think they need to be in there for those extended minutes and getting them getting those reps to make sure that they're ready to go as we move forward. But I have, I have confidence that Mentos can help us as the season progresses, just like I think a number of the freshmen can. Do you think he's more of a volume shooter or he's a guy who come in and make a shot immediately? No, I think he can come in and make a shot immediately. He's shown he's capable of doing it. He just didn't make him tonight. I thought he had some good looks. He didn't make him. But he also made some good plays for us, too. I thought he passed the ball well. He had a couple, probably didn't get assists. I think guys came over, rotated, and maybe knocked the ball out of guys' hands. But he gave guys really good assists for opportunities to get you know easy baskets. And so he's more than just a shooter. He's a basketball player. All right. Thanks, Appreciate guys. it. Thanks a lot, Coach. All right, Thank you. Guys. Thank you.